Over the past 25 years, Sean Brock has risen to the top of the culinary world. He's the founding chef of the restaurant Husk in Charleston, South Carolina, named Best New Restaurant by Bon Appetit in 2011. Husk now has four locations across the South. Brock has won two James Beard Awards, released two best-selling cookbooks, and is featured on the Netflix series Chef's Table. This year, at the age of 41, he walked away from it all. We met up with him at his home in Nashville. I was under the illusion that I was, uh, you know, unbreakable. At his peak, chef and Southern food evangelist, Sean Brock, was operating eight restaurants in five cities, including the acclaimed Husk. It's so fast paced and it's so stressful that you lose access to the part of your brain where all the rational decision making occurs. And so you just keep making mistakes over and over and it's easy to get trapped in that tornado. And you were trapped in it. <laughs> I was in the center of that tornado. I was conducting it. <laughs> Brock admits he was a workaholic. It strikes me that you're, you're pretty obsessive about everything you do. <laughs> uh, yeah. His body was shutting down. In 2016, he was diagnosed with a chronic autoimmune disease that can be aggravated by stress. My immune system started attacking itself. I woke up one day with, with double vision, and you can't use a sharp knife with double vision, and you can't juggle flaming hot pans. And that was the first time in my life where I kind of had my hands tied. He was frustrated, angry, and drinking. His friends and family were alarmed, especially his mom, Renee. Were you worried a few years ago? Absolutely. Because his dad, you know, was a workaholic, and he dropped over from a heart attack at 39. So I held my breath until he reached 40. Mm -hmm. I literally held my breath. I turned 39 in rehab. Yep. There was a, a period of time that I didn't know him. He was just, he wasn't shown. You didn't recognize him? You'll agree, you were a different person, totally different person, weren't you? Completely. What had happened? The alcohol. The, yeah. Uh, it's, it's different. Close friends intervened, and Brock went to rehab. Even when you know you have to change, sometimes it can be very hard to change. I think that's why the universe didn't give me a choice. Do you like yourself better now? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've never been happier, or healthier, or better cook than I, than I am now. How does it change your cooking? Being healthy and being happy has allowed me a clarity that I didn't know existed, honestly. This year, he packed up his knives. You walked away from Husk, which is something you spent a lot of time creating and won you a lot of accolades. It's something that a lot of people were very confused about. Awesome. To build something up and to put so much time into it and for it to be so successful and so important and just to be able to walk away from that was an incredible gift that I gave myself. Brock hasn't worked in a kitchen in a year. Instead, he got married and had a son, Leo. I try to buy all my food here. And visits the Nashville Farmer's Market regularly. That's a formidable potato. I'm gonna buy some because my son Leo uh -huh. likes sweet potatoes. The first time I made food for Leo was pretty, pretty humbling, pretty embarrassing. Why? What happened? So I had this idea that I would come here and pick out like 15 to 20 different varieties of squash or sweet potatoes yes. and line up all the spoons for him to taste each one. And yeah, he was, he gagged. <laughs> he gagged. <laughs> I gotta get these peas. So okay. this is my friend Thomas over here. He's the king of peas with his pea machine. Taste that. That vibrancy, that's the way the food has always tasted in the South. It's the food that I grew up with. Over the years, unfortunately, a lot of this flavor got bred out. These peas inspired the chicken and dumplings recipe in his new cookbook, South, published this fall. These are fancy dumplings, because I can't make yours. It's a celebration of the unheralded Appalachian cuisine Brock says runs through his veins, absorbed growing up in his grandmother's garden in Virginia coal country. You ever had leather britches? Leather britches. Maybe you might know them by sucky beans. Sucky beans.
Today, he has a vegetable garden inked onto his arm. How long did it take you to get that put on? Uh, like 250 hours. Wow. <laughs> really? <laughs> this food will be the star at his upcoming restaurant project in Nashville, where Brock will also try to transform the restaurant business the way he's done his own life. I think it's time in this industry. It used to be your decision making was based around what you're capable of doing. Like how far can you push it? Now it's more, what can we achieve while staying happy and healthy? The mental and physical wellness of the team will be paramount. You're trying to change the culture effectively. Well, in the industry, we bend over backwards all day, every day to take care of the guests. And in the meantime, we're breaking ourselves. You've described this as kind of the second act of your life. It really is. This is the restaurant that I'll serve my last meal in. This is, this is the restaurant where I'll clock out for the final time. That's quite a transformation. Wow. His two restaurant project named after his grandmother, Audrey, opens next spring. It will have a shorter menu to alleviate stress on staff, a special lighting system. There'll also be a soundproof sanctuary room for staff to decompress, meditate, or seek other de-stressing therapies. I like how he's thinking. Yeah. I'm so cheering him on. I can't yeah. wait to go to the new restaurant. It's so interesting with him because even though you realize he's changed, when you see what he did, did for his son in uh, terms of lining up 15, 15 spoons, <laughs> spoons, you know, he's still obsessive about everything he but does. His food looked really, I wanted to oh. lick the screen. I want I to tell you, I've mom, never eaten beans like those beans. Anthony, ever. I love when his mom was rubbing his back when she was talking to him. Yeah. Clearly, it's very tender between the that two was of them. It was a tough period that they, they yeah. got through.